हेलो एवरीवन आई एम प्रज्ञा इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी चैप्टर नंबर सेवन दैट इज डेटा हैंडलिंग इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा टाइप्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑपरेटर्स एंड सम मॉड्यूल्स प्रोवाइडेड बाय पाइथन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड दीज आर टोटल सिक्स डेटा टाइप्स प्रोवाइडेड बाय द पाइथन द नंबर्स एंड स्ट्रिंग डेटा टाइप वी आर ऑलरेडी फैमिलियर विथ इट नाउ वी हैव टू स्टडी अबाउट लिस्ट टपल सेड एंड डिक्शनरी सो लेट्स स्टडी दीज ऑल डेटा टाइप्स इन डिटेल The first data type is numbers. Numbers are used to store numeric values. Here are the three types of the numbers. The first one is integer, second one is floating point number and the third is complex number. Integer further divided into two types. First is sign integer and then we have booleans also. Let's try to understand all these three types of numbers in detail. The first type of number is integer. integers are the whole numbers with no decimal point it can take positive value as well as negative value integers are further categorized into two types the first one is sign integer and the second one is boolean sign integer is nothing but integer it takes positive as well as negative values with no decimal point there is a one more type of integer called as boolean we already know what is the meaning of booleans we have already studied in the chapter boolean logic so boolean can have two values either true or false this true and false internally represented by the number 1 and false is represented by the number 0 we can use bool function along with these numbers to get this boolean values so bool 0 means false and bool 1 means it is true the second type of number is floating point number already we have studied this floating point numbers in the chapter python fundamentals it is a number with the fractional part or we can say with the decimal point we know that these floating point numbers can be represented in two forms the first is fractional form and there is one more form called as exponent form which consists of two parts one is mantissa and one is exponent this we have studied in detail we can note down one more thing about floating point number that it provides precision of 15 digits means after decimal we can get 15 digits of precision in python let's continue with the third type of number that is a complex number complex number is of the form a plus bi if you are a math student you might have studied in maths about the complex number In this type of number a is the real component of the complex number and b is the imaginary component of the complex number where i is the imaginary number and the value of i is square root of minus 1 let's try to understand with one simple example this is one complex number so in this complex number the 2 is the real component of this complex number and 3 is the imaginary components of the complex number we can print the real part and the imaginary part of the complex number using two attributes the first one is real and the second one is imag when we will use this attributes on the complex number you can see here the a and b part are getting printed in the floating point numbers the general form of the complex number is a plus bi but in python we should write these complex number in the form of a plus bj so here also please note down this instead of i we have to use j so in this way we studied the first data type of the python which is very important data type which we will use maximum times that is the numbers so there are three types of number we studied the first one is integer the second one is floating point and the third is complex numbers let's continue the discussion of data type with one more important type of data type provided by python that is string the string is nothing but a sequence of characters even you can enclose one character also each character of the string will get stored in the contiguous memory location means in a sequential manner one after another so if you want to access the individual character of the string that also we can do with the help of index so index starts from 0 we can access the string in forward direction also and in backward direction also if you want to access in forward direction index should start with 
and if you are accessing the string in the reverse direction we have to take the negative index which will start with minus 1. Suppose if I want to access the character A of this string then the index for the forward direction is 1 you can see here so we have to write it in the square bracket along with the name of the string. In the same way this character can be accessed in the backward direction and this time the index is minus 3. We can use the backward indexing to reverse the string. One thing we can note down that strings are immutable. The concept of immutability and mutability I will explain later in this video. The third important data type is list. List is actually a collection of values which can be separated by comma and we can take any type of data type means we can mix a different type of data type in the list. So let's check out some of the example. This is a list of integer values. The second one is the list of characters and here in the third example I have mixed. I have some string values also and some integer values. In list also the individual elements we can access by using the concept of indexing just now we saw how the indexing works in case of string. Okay let's try to print the first value of this list you know indexing starts with 0 so I should write the name of the list and then in square bracket the index. So in this way we can print the value 10. We can note down one thing that the values of the list are mutable means we can change the value. So using this statement I am changing the first value of the list to 5. Initially it was 10 now I am going to replace it with 5. The fourth data type provided by the python is tuple. Tuple is also a collection of values of any data type but here we are enclosing it with brackets or we can say parenthesis also. So here also we can take data type of any data type means we can mix different data types in case of tuple also. Actually tuples are list but here we cannot change the value of the tuple means it is immutable. This is only one difference between list and tuple. In case of list we can change the value that's why it is known as mutable but in case of tuple we cannot change the value in place that's why it is called as immutable. On these data types we are going to study in detail as we have dedicated chapter for these data types. Let's continue the discussion of data type with the fifth data type provided by python that is set. Set is also used to store the collection of value, set of values or group of values. Set in python is just similar to the set in maths which is used to store the collection of data. Sets are similar to the list with little difference. So what are these differences? Let's try to check out. Values in sets are enclosed in curly brackets. We have seen in case of list we enclose the values in square bracket. But in case of sets, we are going to enclose the values using curly brackets. The second difference is set do not allow duplicate entries. We cannot write the same entry again. So let's check this example. Here I have repeated this value 50 which is not allowed. When I will print this set, this one value of 50 will get removed. The third difference is sets cannot contain mutable elements. Mutable elements means we can change the value in place. So you know the list is mutable. So we cannot include list inside the set. I have enclosed this 40 and 50 in square bracket means this is actually a list which I am trying to enclose in sets. So it is not allowed because list is mutable and the sets are immutable so we cannot change the value of the sets the last important data type is dictionary dictionary is also used to store the values but in the form of key value pair within curly braces to understand the concept of key value look at this example the first part is known as key 
and with the colon we have to write the description for that key we can say it as a value so here key value pair will get separated by comma so here 1 2 and 3 all are keys and the value for that key is one two and thr 3 all these are values in dictionary these keys should be unique we cannot duplicate these keys because using the keys we can access the values that's why it should be unique in your portion there is a complete chapter for some of the data types like string tuple list and dictionary we will cover all the methods related to these data types in that chapter so let's note one more thing about dictionary that dictionary is mutable means we can change the value of the dictionary in place. Okay, let me explain one of the main concepts related to these data types is mutability and the immutability. So what is the mutable data type or immutable data type means? Okay, first let's try to understand what is immutable. Immutable types are those that can never change their value in place. Here I have initialized value 10 to one variable x. In Python variable are not storage location, it is just a name label. When we want to store any value, we get memory cell to store it. So we got this memory cell inside that memory cell we have stored value 10. Now the way our house will have unique address each memory cell also will have a unique address. So this is the address randomly I have taken one number it can be anything depending on your memory and x is pointing to that cell. If I will try to change the value of that variable now I have initialized 15 to the variable x so what will happen with this statement before x was pointing to some cell which has this address now this 15 will not get replaced at this memory cell we will get one new memory cell and 15 will get stored in that memory cell now check out this address this is something different from the previous one because we got new memory cell and every cell has its own unique address so here are the sum of the immutable type integers float then number data type is also immutable booleans also string and tuples now what about mutable type in case of mutable data types the values will get replaced at the same address so here are the mutable type list dictionaries and set let's try to understand the concept of mutable types with one simple example here is one list with values 1 2 3 in the second statement i am adding one more item to the list that is 11 so the memory address of this list is same it is replaced at the same address means what if x is pointing to one memory cell with this values 1 2 3 and the address is some random number i am taking it can be anything and now i am adding the value 11 to it so it is getting changed at the same memory address we are not creating any new cell so the mutability means the values can be changed in the same place or at the same memory address. So hope you have understood the concept of mutable and immutable type. Let's continue with the next topic that we are going to study some of the functions related to object. The first function is the type function. With this we can know the data type of that object. Let's try to understand the type function with one example. I have initialized value 10 to a variable a and 10 is an integer data type you know. If I will try to print the type of a, we will get integer. So the data type of a is integer. It belongs to class int. The next function which we can use along with any object that is print function. It gives the value of the object. So if you want to print the value of the object, we can use print function. You can see in this example, I am going to print the value of a that is 10. 
if you want to check out the memory location of any object then you can use id function so i applied here id function to the variable a we are getting some value this is the memory address i have taken some random number it will depend on your machine let's continue our discussions of basic concepts with one major and important topic of any programming language that is operators so what is operator operator is actually a symbol which takes some actions and the operator operates on operands operand means the variables literals constants or it can be any object so here are the six types of operator we have to discuss in detail first is arithmetic operators relational operators the third one is the identity operator fourth we will study that is logical operators the fifth one is bitwise operator and the last is membership operator so let's study all these operators in detail the first operator is arithmetic operator it is used to perform mathematical operations already you are familiar with plus minus multiplication and division let's try to understand some more arithmetic operator we have modulo operator it is used to give the remainder let's consider this example if we will divide 10 by 5 we will get 0 so it gives the remainder value one more operator we have that is floor division it will truncate the fractional part from the result so if we will try to divide 3 by 2 actually the answer is 1.5 but floor division will truncate the fractional part that's why we are getting answer 1.0 one more arithmetic operator is exponential operator it is used to calculate the power we have to write multiplication operator two times without any space so we will get the power of it so 2 to the power 3 is equals to 8 so in this way we studied seven types of arithmetic operator let's discuss one more important operator that is relational operator relational operator is used to compare the values and the result of the relational operator will be a boolean value it will be either true or false so there are total six relational operator first is less than the second one is less than or equal to the third is greater than fourth one is greater than or equal to the fifth one is equal to and the sixth one is not equal to let's try to understand the working of relational operator with example 10 is less than 5 so we got false because 10 is not less than 5 now let's try to apply the second relational operator less than or equal to 10 is less than or equal to 5 10 is not less than 5 also and not equals to also that's why we are getting false here we are using or operator and you know or operator means if any one condition is true then the answer will be true otherwise false here both conditions are false now look at the third operator that is greater than 10 is greater than 5 yes 10 is greater than 5 that's why we got true now look at the fourth one 10 is greater than or equal to 5 yes it is greater than 5 so one condition is true if one condition is true means we will get the answer true that's why we are getting true here now let's check the result of the fifth operator it is equal to operator 10 is equals to 5 no 10 is not equals to 5 that's why we are getting answer false now the last one is not equal to 10 is not equals to 5 yes 10 and 5 both are different numbers it is not equal that's why we are getting answer true don't get confused between this equal to operator and this comparison operator is equals to this is an assignment operator which is used to assign the value and this is a comparison operator it will give result true or false now we are well acquainted with the relational operator which we will use in the conditional statement the third operator is identity operator identity operator is used to compare the memory locations of two object just now we studied immutability and immutability concept what is memory location 
so the first identity operator we have it is is identity operator also evaluates the result in the form of true or false it returns true if both the variables are the same object look at the first assignment statement we are initializing phi to a variable a so the phi will get stored in one cell which will have some unique address i am taking some random number now with the second assignment statement it is clear that the value of b is same as a so b is also pointing to phi which will have same address so when we will apply is operator on a and b it will return value true because the memory address for both of these variable is same the second identity operator we have is not it will also return true if both the objects are not same so look at this example here we have initialized phi to variable a so phi is getting stored in the memory cell which will have some address i am writing some random number then with the second assignment statement we are going to create one more object that is 10 which will have some other memory address i'm writing some random value here so you can see here this address and this address is not same that's why a is not b returns true means the address is different if you want to check out the memory address of these variables and confirm you can use id function so these are the two identity operators Let's discuss one more important operator that is logical operator. It is used to combine two or more relational expression. It also evaluates either true or false. So here are the three logical operators. First one is or, the second one is and and the third one is not. All these operators already we have studied in chapter Boolean logic. If you didn't check out that video, please go and watch it. So let's discuss the working of these operators in short. If any one of the expression is true, then the answer will be true. So let's find out here. The first expression is x is less than 5. So we have taken the value of the x is 10. So 10 is less than 5. This is false. Let's check out the second condition. Is x is equals to 10? Yes the value of x is 10 and 10 is equals to 10 so this is true you can see here one is false and one is true if any one of the expression is true we will get the answer true so we are getting the result as true and what about and operator if both the expressions are true then only we will get the answer true otherwise false so let's check out this expression the first expression is x less than 5 so 10 is less than 5 whether it is true or false it is false and check out for the second condition x is equals to 10 yes it is true so first is false and the second condition is true that's why we are getting answer false in case of and if both the conditions are true then only we will get the answer true in all other cases we will get answer as false and the last logical operator is not not will reverse the value if it is true it will become false if it is false it will become true let's check with this example the expression is getting evaluated as true as the value of x is 10 and not of t means f so we are getting the result as false in this way we studied the working of three logical operator it is used to combine two or more relational expression if you have two or more conditions to check it then you have to perform some action that time we can use the logical operators the fifth operator is bitwise operator from the name only we can say that it is working on the bits Bitwise operators are used to perform some actions on the individual bits of the operand. So here are four bitwise operators we have to study. The first one is bitwise and bitwise or. The third one is bitwise XOR and the last one is bitwise complement. The working of this operator is also just like the logical operator but here we have to check only bits. So you know the working of and if both the bits are 1 then only the output will be 1 otherwise 0. 
in case of or if any one bit is one then we will get the answer one otherwise zero what about the working of the xor xor produces the result one if any of the two bit is one otherwise we will get zero and the complement is just like negation it will invert the bits so let's try to understand with example here i have taken some binary numbers you know the working of and if both the bits are one then only we will get one otherwise in all other cases we will get zero let's check out the result for bitwise or operator in case of or any bit is one then the answer will be one here also one bit is one so answer is one here both are one so answer is one and in case of both the zeros answer will be zero and what about xor we need any one bit one so answer will be one here also we have one bit one so answer is one in other cases we have answer zero and bitwise complement operator will negate the value or invert the value if it is one it will be zero and if it is zero it will be one in this way we got this result so we studied bitwise operator it is used to work on the binary numbers let's discuss about the last set of operator that is membership operator membership operator test for membership in a sequence and sequence can be strings list tuples or dictionary it will check the value is present in that sequence or not so there are two membership operators the first one is in and the second one is not in the membership operator in will return value 2 if the value is present in the sequence otherwise it will return false and what about not in operator not in operator will return true if the value is not present in the sequence otherwise it will return false let's try to understand the working of in operator and not in operator with one simple example here there is one list with some string values now i have to check whether this character a is present in this list or not for that we are using in operator along with if if a is in list one then if it is true it will give value true otherwise it will produce value false in our case this a is present in this list that's why we will get answer true and the reverse of it is not in operator if the required value is not present in the list we will get true otherwise we will get false so in our case this value is present in this list that's why we will get the false answer if it is not present then we will get true so to check whether the required value is present in the data sequence we can use in or not in operator so in this way we studied six types of operators the first one is arithmetic operator the second one is a relational operator third we studied identity operator the fourth one is logical operator the fifth one is bitwise operator and at the last we studied membership operators now let's try to understand one more concept related to operator that is operator precedence if in an expression there are more than one operators then operator precedence determines the order in which it will evaluate the operator having higher precedence will evaluate first so here is the table with some operator according to their precedence the parenthesis is having highest precedence then exponential operator then we have some unary operators after that this multiplication division will have the next priority then plus minus will get evaluated in this way all the operators has their own priority level so according to the priority they will get evaluated the higher the priority first they will get evaluated the one more concept related to operator is operator associativity if we have multiple operators of same precedence in an expression then how that will get evaluated then we can apply the associativity concept on that operators it says that if 
multiple operators of same priority are there in the expression it can be evaluated from left to right or from right to left maximum operators has this associativity that is left to right except exponential operator exponential operator gets evaluated from right to left let's implement the operator associativity on this simple example here there are operators plus and minus which are of the same precedence then this will get calculated from left to right as plus minus has the associativity left to right so let's try to calculate it first this 1 plus 2 will get calculated so we will get 3 then the remaining numbers i am writing as it is in the next step we will calculate again from left hand side so 3 minus 3 will be 0 and then remaining is 4 again from left to right we will get answer 4 now let's check out for one more example according to this table multiplication division modulo and floor division all these operators are at the same precedence level so these operators will get calculated from left to right so first of all we will multiply these two values so we will get 56 so remaining is 5 this is floor division and again in the next step we have to calculate from left to right so 56 divided by 5 will get calculated we will get 11.2 and next is floor division by 2 actually the answer of this is 5.6 but this will get truncated and we will get answer 5.0 let's solve one more expression having exponential operator and you know exponential operator has associativity right to left so this time we should evaluate from right side so first of all the square of 3 will get calculated so we will get 9 now 2 to the power 9 means we will get 512 so whenever we are evaluating any expression we should keep in mind what is the precedence of the operator and what associativity it follows just now we evaluated some expressions so let's try to understand what are expressions and the types of the expression expression is a combination of operators and the atoms atoms are nothing but a value so look at the definition of the atom atom means which has some value it can be any type of data type which has values so it can be identifier it can be literals string list tuples set dictionary etc because here all these data types we are using to store some values so here are the five types of expression first is arithmetic expression the second one is string expression third is relational expression fourth one is logical expression and the fifth one we have that is compound expression let's try to understand these expressions in detail the first type of expression is arithmetic expression the expression which is having arithmetic operators and some numbers or variables so 10 plus 20 is a example of arithmetic expression it is having arithmetic operators and some literals or it can be some variables also the second one is relational expression from name itself we can define the expression which is having relational operators along with literals or variables here is an example of relational expression the third is logical expression logical expressions will have logical operators and variables or constants the fourth one is string expression in string expressions we will have some string operands and the string operators there are two operators which we can use on string the first one is plus it is known as concatenation operator which is used to combine two different string into a single string let's take one example for that here there is one string and there is one more string i have mentioned here now we are using plus operator so in case of string plus operator works as a concatenation operator which will combine two different string into a single string so look at the output of this 
these two different string got combined into a single one and there is one more operator we will use in case of string it is known as a replication operator let's take one example there is a one string and i have to replicate or i have to repeat that string two times so i have multiplied it by two so look at the output this python string is getting repeated two times if you want five times multiplied by five if you want ten times multiplied with ten there is one more type of expression known as compound expression which will have multiple types of operator which will operate on literals or variables let's consider one example you can see here we have used here some of the arithmetic operators along with one of the relational operator so there are total five types of expressions Let's continue our discussion with very important and interesting topic that is modules. Python programming language has standard library. In that library, we have some modules. But what is module? Module is nothing but a file which contains some variables, constants, and more important is functions that we are going to use in our program. So here are the some modules that we have to study. The first is math. the math module contains the mathematical functions there is one more interesting module we are going to study that is random it is used to generate some random numbers and the statistic module will have some functions related to stats so let's discuss these modules in detail the first one is math module it contains all the mathematical related functions to use math module in your program you need to import that module first using this statement there are lot of mathematical functions in math module some of that i have listed here the first one is power function it is used to calculate the power so let's check out this example 3 comma 2 means 3 to the power 2 which will give answer 9 there is one more important functions which we need in our mathematical calculation is sqrt it is used to calculate the square root of a number so for whichever number you want to calculate square root write in the bracket functions are available in the math module to calculate the trigonometric value like sin cosine tan so here is the syntax of that we should provide this value so that the sin of that value will get calculated for that you should provide that value in radians there is one more function cell which will returns the smallest integer value larger than that number it is used for rounding off so cell of 4.3 will be 5 it is the next smallest integer but it should be greater than this integer value there is one more mathematical function floor which will round up that fractional part to the integer part but this time it will round off to the smaller value so 4.3 will become 4 so these are some of the mathematical functions which are available in the module math let's discuss one of the important module of python that is a random module random module is used for generating random numbers you can use this module to write program to generate otp even for lucky draw or you can play one small game with your friend of guessing random number so here are the three functions we are going to study from this module the first is random this random function generates floating point random numbers in the range 0.0 to 1 but if you want to print integer random numbers then we have this function r a n d i n t and we have to mention the range let's consider one example here i have given the starting value 10 and the ending value 15 so in between these two values i can get some random number it can be 10 it can be 12 or it can be till 15 there is one more function which is useful to generate random numbers in the range but with some step value here we can decide by how much of value the numbers should get incremented so here is this function r a n d range we have to mention the starting value and we have to mention the ending value and the step by this much of quantity the numbers will get incremented let's consider one example here 
the starting value is 10 and the end value is 20 and the number should get incremented by 2. So internally we will get the numbers like this 10, 12, then 14, 16 up to 20. So out of this range only you will get any random numbers. We will try to write some program based on these modules at the end of this video. The third module which is in your portion is statistic module. It is used for some of the statistic functions. There are lot of functions in this module. Some of these I have listed here. The first is mean. It is used to calculate the average of the given numbers. Then we have one more function median. It will calculate the middle value of the given data. And one more function we have that is mode. It will calculate the most common value of the given set of data. So look at the example here. I have taken one list here. So if I want to calculate the mean of this, you can apply this mean function on the sequence. And then similarly, you will get the median. And mode also you can calculate using this sequence. beginners when we are trying to write any program there are chances of getting errors so what we have to do we have to do the debugging so what is the debugging means debugging is the locating place of error cause of error and correcting the code if there are errors we have to debug the program means we have to rectify the errors so that we will get the desired output so there are two techniques for debugging first we have to rectify the errors or we have one more option of code tracing. We have studied about dry run and the trace table in the previous chapters. Now in this chapter, we will try to understand what is error. So error is an illegal operation performed by the user. If we don't follow the syntax of the programming language, we get errors. So the errors are categorized in three types. First one is compile time error. The second one is logical errors and the third one is runtime error. The compile time error is further divided into two types. The first one is syntax error and the second one is semantic error. Let's understand these errors in detail. The first type of error is compile time errors. Compile time errors occurs during the compilation. Compilation means program is getting converted to the binary format. So the source code means our program will get checked whether we are following the programming rules or not. Compile time error is further categorized as syntax error and the semantic error. So syntax error occurs when the grammatical rule of Python is violated. So let's take some example. I want to initialize 16 to the variable age, but I am using the wrong operator here. It should be age is equals to 6. I should use assignment operator, not a comparison operator. So this is also not according to the syntax of the programming. There is one more example here. We are using print statement, but the starting bracket we have written, but we forget to write the ending bracket. So it will also result into a syntax error. So when you are not following the proper syntax of the programming language, it will result into a syntax error. The second type of compile time error is semantic error. Semantic error occurs when the statements are not meaningful. Let's take one example that I am writing one sentence, Adi plays football. So this statement is correct according to the grammar of the English. If I will try to write this sentence in the way football plays Adi. This is also a correct statement according to the rule, but it has no meaning. This is the meaningless statement. Sometimes though we are following the correct syntax, but the statement is not meaningful then it will result into the cementing error so let's take one example here we are multiplying two variables so this is a correct form of multiplication but when i'm trying to initialize to one variable the statement is not meaningful it should be like this c is equals to a into b let's take one more example here we are dividing two values with the division operator that is correct but this a is an integer value and this 2 is a string value which is not allowed in the division operator. The second type of error is logical error. 
लॉजिकल एरर ऑकर्स बिकॉज ऑफ लॉजिकल मिस्टेक्स इन द प्रोग्राम दो द सिंटेक्स इज करेक्ट इफ यूर लॉजिक इज रॉन्ग यू विल गेट द रॉन्ग आउटपुट कंसिडर दिस एग्जाम्पल वी हैव टू एड द टू नंबर्स इयर सो वी हैव टेकन टू नंबर्स दिस इज करेक्ट बट इंस्टेड ऑफ एडिंग आई एम यूजिंग द सब्ट्रैक्शन ऑपरेटर दो द सिंटेक्स इज करेक्ट बट वी विल गेट द रॉन्ग रिजल्ट The third type of error is runtime error. Runtime error occurs at the runtime means when we execute the program. When runtime error occurs, it stops the execution of the program. So actually when there is a runtime error, the runtime error throws exception. So what is this exception? Exceptions are unusual situations which can be encountered while executing the program. and it will stop the program abruptly in between the execution of the program so errors and exceptions are similar but with a different term we can say error is a bug which we have to rectify from the program and the exception is a unusual situation which we will encounter during the execution of the program Let's take one real life example for error and exception. If you are trying to log in somewhere and you are typing username and password, and if you are typing the wrong username or password, that is error. But after typing it correctly, and when you are trying to log in, the server is down or your system is getting hanged, it is an example of exception. So there are some built-in exception in the programming language. So let's discuss some of them. The first one is zero division error. This exception will raise when you are trying to divide a number by zero. So check out here when I am trying to divide any number by zero, I will get this type of exception. The name is zero division error because you cannot divide any number by zero. There is one more type of exception that is type error. It will raise whenever data incompatible action or function is tried to be executed. So what does it means? Let's try to understand with the example. Here I am trying to add one string value and integer value which are data type incompatible. We cannot add string and integer value. So I will get this error type error. The next one is the value error. This exception raised when the function is applied to an identifier of an appropriate type. So here I am using one function int and applying on this value. So I cannot apply integer value on this type of data which is of mixed integer and string. The last one we are going to discuss is name error. so name error exception raised when an identifier name is not found so you can check here i am going to print one variable a but i did not initialize any value to the variable a if i did not initialize any value to variable in python means that variable is not created and directly i am trying to print the value of it which is not created so i will get the exception name error here we discuss only some of the exception there is a long list of exceptions which are built in in python programming language which you can refer from your textbook also let's write some programs using the module first of all we are going to use the module man we are going to calculate the area of triangle where we have provided the three sides of the triangle and first we need to calculate s the formula to calculate s is a plus b plus c by 2 and then we have to calculate the area and the formula to calculate area is square root of this term so let's code first of all you should import the module you need here we are using math module Now let's follow our three steps first take input then process and then output to calculate the area we need three sides so let's take the three sides here i am not going to change the variable name according to the formula we will keep the same variable name and the sides of the triangle can be float so i am using float to change the string value to float because you know by default the value from input statement will be of string type so first we have to enter the first side that is a and similarly we will enter other two sides also 
so now let's calculate as so formula for that is a plus b plus c divide by 2 now we have to calculate area and the formula for the area is square root of this term this square root function is inside the math module so we should write first the name of the module then dot you can see here the list of the functions will pop up it is in the alphabetical order so press s directly it will take you to the function name starting with s then select the required function we need sqrt so select it and write the formula inside this function now so the formula is s into in bracket s minus a close that bracket again multiplication sign the second term is s minus b and again multiplication with s minus c now we have to print the area so use printf statement and uh, print along with message so area equals to then comma we have to write and then the variable name so we have written this program successfully as you can see there is no error let's check the output click on this triangle so let's enter the first side i'm going to enter some integer value enter some value for the second side now enter the third side i'm going to give some float value now let's add some symbol here so that the value will not get connected to the message now let's run the program once again and this time i am going to enter some different set of data you can see here we are getting the error here when we run the program first time we did not get the error but now we are getting some error mat domain error because the term inside the square root function may be evaluating to minus value and square root function cannot be applied to the minus value so we are getting the error so we can rectify this error but this i cannot cover it now okay let's design one simple and interesting game in which your friend has to guess one number and if it gets matches with our number then he will be the winner or not for that we are going to use the module random first of all we should import it using import statement okay let's take one variable in which we are going to store the number guessed by your friend so let's take input statement along with int so that it will be a integer value so we'll print one message guess a number from 1 to 100 so we got the number from your friend now we will generate our own random number and then we will compare both are equal or not let's take one variable in which we will store the random number generated by the random function so the name of the module first we should write then dot and you can see here we got the list of the functions in the random module so i am going to use random integer press tab and here we have to mention the starting value and the ending value so our game is from 1 to 100 now we got the random number generated by the system also now let's compare both the numbers are equal or not using if statement so we got the number in guess and our generated number is no write colon here so it will be a block if both the numbers are equal then we can write some message but what if both the numbers are not equal then for that we can write the message in the else part you can see here i got the message better luck next time because the number which i guessed did not match with the number generated by this function we studied one more module that is statistics module so let's use it to calculate mean median and mode here i have declared one list with some values now let's calculate the statistical values so let's take one variable l mean to calculate mean equals to first we have to write the name of the module so the name of the module is statistics then dot you can see here the list of the functions are getting displayed out of that we need mean so which is from m press m it will go directly to the name of the function starting with m now select mean press tab 
so inside the bracket we have to write the name of the list which is list1 in the same way i am going to use the mode function and median also so let's print all these three values using print statement the first one we calculated is mean so mean equals to and the variable name is this l underscore mean so write other two statements also let's run the program and check the output you can see from the output we got the mean mean means average and we got mode 5 because 5 is getting repeated maximum time and the median means the middle value of these values so in this way we used all the three modules in the program in your textbook there are lot of program try to practice it so in this chapter we studied some of the important topics of python like different types of data types different operators and some of the modules there are lot of modules in python which makes it popular i hope you understood all the concepts if you found this video meaningful please subscribe to my channel so that you will not miss any of my video in the next chapter we are going to study chapter number 8 flow of control so till then keep studying see you in the next video